God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Faith of the Father's faith and prayer shall win all nations unto thee. And through the truth that comes from God, mankind shall then indeed be free. Faith of our Father's holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our fathers we will love, both friend and foe in all our strife and preach thee to as love knows how, by kindly deeds and virtuous life. Faith of our Father's holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Let us praise the Lord for his mercy and for the wonderful things he has done for men. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love endures forever. Let them say this, the Lord's redeemed, whom he redeemed from the hand of the foe and gathered from far off lands, from east and west, north and south. Some wandered in the desert, in the wilderness, finding no way to a city they could dwell in. Hungry they were and thirsty. Their soul was fainting within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress, and he led them along the right way to reach a city they could dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his love, for the wonders he does for men. For he satisfies the thirsty soul. He fills the hungry with good things. Some lay in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in misery and chains, having defied the words of God and spurned the counsels of the Most High. He crushed their spirit with toil. They stumbled. There was no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He led them forth from darkness and gloom and broke their chains to pieces. Let them thank the Lord for his goodness, for the wonders he does for men, for he bursts the gates of bronze and shatters the iron bars. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord for, for his, his mercy and, and for, for the wonderful, wonderful things he has done for men. Men have seen the works of God, the marvels he has done. Some were sick on account of their sins and afflicted on account of their guilt. They had a loathing for every food. They came close to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He sent forth his word to heal them, and saved their life from the grave. Let them thank the Lord for his love, for the wonders he does for men. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanks, and tell of his deeds with rejoicing. Some sailed to the sea in ships, to trade on the mighty waters. These men have seen the Lord's deeds, the wonders he does in the deep. For he spoke, he summoned the gale, raising up the waves of the sea, tossed up to heaven, then into the deep, 
Their soul melted away in their distress. They staggered, reeled like drunken men, for all their skill was gone. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. All the waves of the sea were hushed. They rejoiced because of the calm, and he led them to the haven they desired. Let them thank the Lord for his love, the wonders he does for men. Let them exalt him in the gathering of the people, and praise him in the meeting of all the elders. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Men have seen the, the works, works of God, God the, the marvels he has done. Those who love the Lord will see and rejoice. They will understand his loving kindness. He changes streams into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, fruitful land into a salty waste for the wickedness of those who live there. But he changes desert into streams, thirsty ground into springs of water. There he settles the hungry, and they build a city to dwell in. They sow fields and plant their vines. These yield crops for the harvest. He blesses them. They grow in numbers. He does not let their herds decrease. He pours contempt upon princes, makes them wander in trackless wastes. They diminish, are reduced to nothing by oppression, evil, and sorrow. But he raises the needy from distress, makes families numerous as a flock. The upright see it and rejoice, but all who do wrong are silenced. Whoever is wise, let him heed these things and consider the love of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Those who love the Lord will see and rejoice. They, they will, will understand, understand his, his loving kindness. Your truth, O God, is high as the clouds. Lord, your goodness is deep as the ocean. From the Book of Lamentations Remember, O Lord, what has befallen us. Look and see our disgrace. Our inherited lands have been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. We have become orphans, fatherless. Widowed are our mothers. The water we drink we must buy, for our own wood we must pay. On our necks is the yoke of those who drive us. We are worn out, but allowed no rest. To Egypt we submitted, and to Assyria to fill our need of bread. Our fathers, who sinned, are no more but we bear their guilt. Slaves rule over us, and there is no one to rescue us from their hands. At the peril of our lives, we bring in our sustenance. In the face of the desert heat, our skin is shriveled up as though by a furnace with the searing blasts of famine. The wives in Zion were ravished by the enemy, the maidens in the cities of Judah. Princes were gibbeted by them, elders show no respect. The youths carry the millstones, boys stagger under their loads of wood. The old men have abandoned the gate, the young men their music. The joy of our hearts has ceased. Our dance has turned into mourning. The garlands have fallen from our heads. Woe to us, for we have sinned. Over this our hearts are sick. At this our eyes grow dim. 
that Mount Zion should be desolate, with jackals roaming there. You, O Lord, are enthroned forever. Your throne stands from age to age. Why then should you forget us, abandon us so long a time? Lead us back to you, O Lord, that we may be restored. Give us anew such days as we had of old. For now you have indeed rejected us, and in full measure turned your wrath against us. You are enthroned forever, O Lord. Why then should you forget us forever? Lead us back to you, and we shall be renewed. Save us, Lord, or we shall perish. Lead us back to you, and we shall be renewed. From a letter by St. Cyprian, Bishop and Martyr. Cyprian sends greetings to his brother Cornelius. My very dear brother, we have heard of the glorious witness given by your courageous faith. On learning of the honor you had won by your witness, we were filled with such joy that we felt ourselves sharers and companions in your praiseworthy achievements. After all, we have the same church, the same mind, the same unbroken harmony. Why then should a priest not take pride in the praise given to a fellow priest as though it were given to him? What brotherhood fails to rejoice in the happiness of its brothers wherever they are? Words cannot express how great was the exultation and delight here when we heard of your good fortune and brave deeds, how you stood out as leader of your brothers in their declaration of faith, while the leader's confession was enhanced as they declared their faith. You led the way to glory, but you gained many companions in that glory, being foremost in your readiness to bear witness on behalf of all you prevailed on your people to become a single witness. We cannot decide which we ought to praise, your own ready and unshaken faith or the love of your brothers who would not leave you. While the courage of the bishop who thus led the way has been demonstrated, at the same time the unity of the brotherhood who followed has been manifested. Since you have one heart and one voice, it is the Roman Church as a whole that has thus borne witness. Dearest brother, bright and shining is the faith which the blessed apostle praised in your community. He foresaw in the spirit the praise your courage deserves and the strength that could not be broken. He was heralding the future when he testified to your achievements. His praise of the fathers was a challenge to the sons. Your unity, your strength, have become shining examples of these virtues to the rest of the brethren. Divine providence has now prepared us. God's merciful design has warned us that the day of our own struggle, our own contest, is at hand. By that shared love which binds us closely together, we are doing all we can to exhort our congregation to give ourselves unceasingly to fasting, vigils, and prayers in common, these are the heavenly weapons which give us the strength to stand firm and endure. They are the spiritual defenses, the God-given armaments that protect us. Let us then remember one another, united in mind and heart. Let us pray without ceasing, you for us, we for you. By the love we share, we shall thus relieve the strain of these great trials. We are warriors now, fighting on the battlefield of faith, and God sees all we do. The angels watch, and so does Christ. What honor and glory and joy to do battle in the presence of God and to have Christ approve our victory. Let us arm ourselves in full strength and prepare ourselves for the ultimate struggle with blameless hearts, true faith, and unyielding courage. What honor and glory and joy to do battle in the presence of God and to have Christ approve our victory. Let us pray. God our Father, 
In Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, you have given your people an inspiring example of dedication to the pastoral ministry and constant witness to Christ in their suffering. May their prayers and faith give us courage to work for the unity of your Church. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.